Hey guys and gals, Rich Finelli here, and today we're going to talk about responsive web design. Now there are three fundamentals to learn when designing responsively. Fluid grids, flexible images, and media queries. Now there's actually a lot more to responsive web design, but by mastering or just understanding these three mainstays, you'll feel really great about the websites you create. So today we're going to focus on fluid grids and we are going to turn those fixed width pixel based layouts into fluid width percentage based layouts so let's begin here's a look at my fixed width 960 pixel layout we can see as the browser window gets smaller or larger the size of my content sections remain fixed. And my content sections are at is I have a, a main left content section. Within the main left I have these little uh, content areas that I call content sections. And then floated to the right I have a tip of the week as my uh, my sidebar. So now switching over to the CSS that only controls our widths. Specifically, um, nothing pertaining to margins or padding. That does come into play when creating a fluid width or a flexible grid. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to focus on the widths right now. And then the rest of our CSS is in a separate style sheet. So everything sits inside of this wrapper div or ID. And when converting my fixed width to a fluid width, I use the formula target divided by context equals result. What that means is you look at the width of an element in pixels. That's our target. And divide that by its containing element. That's the context. That'll give you our result in a percentage and we will plug that percentage in as our width. So the first step is to convert the wrapper of 960 pixels to a percentage. Just divide 960 by, well, that's hard to do because our wrapper is centered uh, inside of our body tags and the body tags have no width. So really the wrapper's containing element is pretty much the browser window, the size of it. So our first step is going to require a little bit of guesswork. What we are going to do is replace 960 pixels with the percentage. Um, that percentage, coming up with that, is going to require the guesswork. The goal is to switch back and forth between pixels and percentages until there's seemingly no difference when we refresh my browser between the pixel based width and the percentage based width. So I've actually already done the guesswork and I figured out that it's exactly or almost 75.9%. So let's save that. Let's switch back over to the browser. There was really just minimal movement so that's pretty good. Uh, not perfect but close. So the wrapper is not an exact science but the rest really is. So switching back over to the CSS, um, my main content or my left main ID sits inside the wrapper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my target divided by context on my computer's calculator. So what we're going to do is 640 target divided by 960 context equals result. I'm going to copy and paste that very long decimal into my CSS as my width. I'm going to move the decimal point over two places to make it a official percentage. And I'm not going to forget about this pixel based width. Uh, what I've learned from Ethan Marcote's book, really defining the subject of responsive web design, is to keep these formulas in a 
comment off to the right and it really is helpful it's going to be helpful just in just a moment when I actually have to use the same for formula on my content section because now I don't forget that okay this was 640 pixels and then if I ever have to change it change these widths in the future I know how I arrived at the percentages so back to my computer's calculator target divided by context we're going to do a 530 pixels divided by the context which since our content section sits inside of the left main div my context has changed it's no longer 960 pixels it is 640 pixels which equals a little bit more manageable percentage can't forget to move the decimal point over to the right and keep my formula off into a comment to the right. And I don't want to forget the details. The last thing is our right secondary ID. That was the tip of the week that was floated off to the right. So now what we're going to do is 280 divided by 960, our context is now the wrapper again. So 280, our, our target, divided by 960, our context, equals this almost a little over 0.29. Turn that into a percentage, move our decimal point over to the right again, and then keep our formula off in a comment to the right. So far, so good. Okay, so the next step is to test it out in the browser. And I want to make sure that the percentages and formulas that I entered yield the results that I hope they do. So we'll refresh the page, and that was a good sign. Nothing really changed. And as I resize the browser window, we get a nice adaptable grid that goes with the flow as the size of my browser window is modified. I would expect similar outcomes when this website is presented on larger and smaller monitors. Wait a second. The page title, which is actually an image, is acting independently of our fluid grid. It wants to be an individual. I guess I can't blame it for that. But it's really disobeying our fluid grid. Hmm. Does this make a perfect segue into our next video tutorial on responsive image techniques or what? Well, that is all for this video. In our next video on responsive web design, yep, you guessed it, we'll be discovering flexible images.